Hi, and welcome to Infinite Rest 1.4. Update 1.4 has just been released, and I thought it would be a good idea to update the walkthrough so you can find all information in a single video instead of having to hunt and seek through multiple videos, figuring out what stuff is new and what's been removed. Without further ado, let's dive in and see what this thing's all about. Infinite Brass is a collection of next-generation virtual brass instruments for native instruments contact. It offers unparalleled expression, multiple mic positions and rooms, over 50 total positions for flexible instrument positioning and section sizes, and all with a low RAM footprint of around 15 megabytes per instrument. You can achieve realistic performances with many sonic possibilities and even on a laptop. I'll be writing down a list of related topics, explaining and demonstrating how the instruments work, and at the end I'll play through each instrument individually. The interface is pretty straightforward. You can right-click any control to change the controller and do further adjustments like controller ranges in the MIDI Automation tab. There are three main parameters which you'll use all the time to shape your music and these are dynamics, note velocity and note duration. Dynamics set the overall loudness of the instrument. Infinite brass instruments are phase-aligned which means that there are no perceivable crossfades and the dynamic response is smooth throughout. Note velocity determines the loudness of the attack. The loudness will then either increase or decrease to match your current dynamics value. If the note velocity is above your current dynamics value, you'll get a strong attack. And if it's below, you'll get a soft attack. You can adjust the duration of the soft attack with the attack time knob. When at its maximum value, this control enters velocity mode, meaning that velocity will now also determine attack time in addition to the loudness of the attack. This is a new feature in 1.4 and is now set to this by default for all instruments. You can adjust the range of the soft and hard attacks with the attack range knob. This knob sets a value between 1 and 127, which limits the amount that soft and hard attacks can offset the loudness for, or how much of the dynamic slider can the loudness vary for. If the range is at 40 and the dynamics are at 127, playing the velocity 100 note will start the attack at loudness value 100. But playing a velocity 40 note or any velocity below 80 or 127 minus this range, this will always start the attack at loudness value of this minimum. Same goes for heart attacks. So if you were to turn this attack range knob all the way to zero, your attacks will always start at your current dynamics value, which is a playstyle similar to some other performance libraries out there. In this case, you have to play the attacks yourself. Hopefully, you're beginning to see how you can shape your playstyle using these two knobs. You can experiment with strong attacks on low dynamics and soft attacks on high dynamics with different attack time values to see how vast the possibilities for playing shorts are. Okay, let's move on. The third important parameter is note duration. No duration is important for playing shorts or any repetitions since these millisecond differences do actually matter. Therefore, the best results are most easily achieved by just punching in a line. You get humanized note velocity, humanized note timings, and perform dynamics and whatever other controllers you decide to perform. If you decide to sequence infinite brass instead or import from Sibelius or any other notation software, make sure to have different note lengths for each note. These very much do matter. If you play an overlapping note, you'll get a legato transition. A lower velocity on the overlapping note means a longer transition. On lower velocities, trombones can perform a glide. Mm -hmm. 
the glide depth knob sets the depth of the loudness dip during a gliding legato transition. If you continue to hold the old note and release the new note, you'll get the legato transition back to your old note. This is also pretty useful for playing trills. So you can have your own personal organic trills, and if you play in each instrument individually, it'll sound great because of all the different note starts and thus different trilling speeds. Here's an example of three horns playing trills. Notice how the faster the instruments are trilling, the higher the velocity. You want to make sure you're using fast legato transitions, but even if you're not, the script will realize that you're playing fast and compensate, but more on that in a second. Generally, you're much safer using faster legato transitions. Legato minimum sets the lowest possible velocity for legato transitions, meaning you can completely avoid the long legato transitions if you so desire. If you enable the legato bypass mode, the legato and attack scripts will be disabled and each note attack will start at your current dynamics value, and you can play chords. It's called legato bypass for clarity, but my intent was for this to be the sketch mode, so you can preview chords without having to play each note with a different instrument first, and this really speeds things up. I wouldn't really recommend playing chords with a single instrument for the actual final production, because you'll get same pitch, breath and attack variations applied to both notes. By default, it's mapped to the sustain pedal, but like with everything else, you can right-click and remap it to any control you desire. So going back to the legato function, the script dips the loudness during the transition, and this is defaulted to the lowest common denominator, which is runs. You can also play rips and falls. The legato script is pretty smart and will realize if you're intending to play faster than what your current legato duration indicates, so it will speed up the legato transitions, depending on if you play notes and how often you play notes while the transition or transitions are still being executed. This is useful for instruments that can play longer glides like trombones. so that you don't have to wait for the slower transition to end and you're not thrown off during your performance. Later on you can just pump into the MIDI editor and edit the velocities. And of course this is a key feature that makes trills and runs consistently sound good. So as I said, the scripted dip is defaulted to the runs and if you're playing slower, you'll have to inflect the notes yourself like a real player does. This is where the magic of infinite brass comes alive and lets you truly express yourself. You're not limited by pre-recorded legato transitions and note inflections, but instead you can perform your own personal ones. And whatever you play in will sound authentic and realistic, which brings us to sound. Infinite Brass was recorded dry and sampled chromatically. This means that each note was recorded individually, instead of every other note being recorded and then stretched by a semitone, which is an approach most sample libraries take today. The instruments themselves are non-linear, and there are subtle scripted pitch, volume and resonance variations every time you play a note. There are no staccato overlays or something like that, each instrument is always a single voice. Well, contact plays all the layers, but you will always perceive it as a single voice because all the layers are perfectly in phase. And nonlinear scripting makes sure that it's always different. You would have to render a single note over 10,000 times in order to get two renders which are exactly the same and cancel each other out. Add in your own player expression and the number suddenly gets much bigger. That non-linearity isn't super obvious, but it works on a subconscious level, so playing never feels like you're machine gunning. So you can think of each instrument as a really tight player. They'll play everything exactly as you tell them to, every time. Not better, not worse, but with really tiny human differences with each quote-unquote take. I don't believe in having clams recorded in a sample library. Forcing a clam on the user every time they use that note or round robin is a bad design choice in my opinion, so I'm not doing it here. That being said, you can play in the errors yourself. P 
pitch errors, timing errors, blowing mistakes, heavy detune playing on pedal notes, etc. This was the pitch wheel and you can pitch bend the instrument up or down a semitone. This is also great for aleatorics like bends or clusters. Here's an example of a four horn cluster. Playing, pitch bending, and nonlinear behaviors are all reflected in the room in real time. Infinite Brass makes use of convolution using over 2400 bespoke impulse responses. So, as you play, random changes happen to the attacks, pitch, and breath fluctuation. You always get a 100% correct room response to it. No more missing ambience when you crossfade, no more incorrect releases or synthy longs. There are three mic sets for each position in each room. Ambient mics can be routed to a different output, which is useful if you want to use them in a surround mix. Ambient mics are the only ones that can be routed, as this is a limitation in contact. You can change the room by clicking on a menu here and choosing another. Now the IRs are loaded in the background and you're good to go. This can take a second or two if you're doing it to multiple instruments simultaneously. You can do that by making use of the space controller, which is this tiny icon here. If you right click it, you can assign it to a different controller. By default, it's always assigned to CC30. This makes it very easy to swap spaces while working, be it with a controller, a button or expression maps. And here are the rooms in Infinite Brass. You change the instrument position with this second menu. All instruments have access to offstage and soloist positions. These are the only positions in Infinite Brass that are shared between instrument families, so try not to have multiple instruments in these positions playing at the same time. The soloist position is right in front of the conductor. It's great for solo works, concertos, etc. You can enable mixed mic over here, which disables three convolution units and switches to a single unit mode. Here you can choose from five premixed IRs based on the perceived distances. This option reduces CPU usage by around 40%, and it's a great option if you're working on a laptop or an older machine. And since it's mapped to the same controller for all instruments, you can easily switch it on or off, so you can work with the mixed mic and then render out whatever mic settings you dialed in. These will stay saved in and will not reset if you enable mixed mic. The HQ button will enable high quality filters. This will make the sound a bit clearer and sharper on higher dynamics at the cost of a slightly higher CPU usage. It's very noticeable on trumpets, which is why it's enabled by default there. It's less noticeable on trombones and horns, and for tubas I found that it made no difference at all, so it's not even available there. Each instrument has its own set of mutes. The mute control is a slider, so you can easily remap and use it without having the contact window open. If the instrument is playing when a mute is changed, the mute will be applied on the next break. On the right hand side we'll find more performance capabilities. Playable vibrato, flutter and growl are all engaged with the controls here. Here's the flutter tongue. And the growl. Volume reduces the overall volume of the instrument, which is a default CC11 controller.
and the dynamic range reduces the overall volume dip for the dynamics. So if it's at zero, the big dynamic slider will change only the timbre, but not the volume. Humanize will enable real-time humanization. This will offset the note start time and the note velocity by the amount set here. While this represents the offset in time in milliseconds, keep in mind that the note velocity offset isn't this big, but it's actually one-fifth of this value. This is a feature you'll use if you're playing in multiple instruments at the same time or copy and pasting MIDI. It's enabled by default on all non leader instruments, so you're good to go at the moment you load the whole thing up. Also keep in mind that this is all happening on the instrument level, so every time you hit a key, you get different timings and different velocities. So when you play in all six horns and record that in MIDI, on playback, every time you play through that MIDI file, it'll be a tiny bit different. Different timings, different velocities, and thus different legato durations, except for horn one. Now, this is important because horn one being perfectly on point gives you a sense of control, meaning that the sound starts at the moment you press a key and there's at least one instrument playing at the same exact loudness as the velocity you just played and all the others are a bit late and some are over, some are under loudness wise. And it's essentially what you would get if you just played in a single line, then copy and pasted it to all the other instruments and applied humanization inside your DAW, except this is very much like its own living thing. There's no random seed that it resets to, like round robin resets. Therefore, if you want full control over how your section sounds, your best bet is to play in each instrument individually. And it, in, if there's a full blown tootie, this will do more than a good job, as is evident in the fanfare for the Common Man demo. But in any way, I would still at least reperform Dynamic slash CC1 if your section line is exposed. Attack accuracy control is also here to help with the ensemble sound, but can be used separately from Humanize. You'll notice it's set to lower values in non-leader instruments, and I would recommend you keep it that way, regardless of whether you use Humanize or not. Not necessarily the same values, but to keep the other instruments less accurate attack-wise. What's happening is uh, the lower values increase the instrument's tendency to miss the pitch on attack, and when that happens, it will go back to normal, in a set period of time, which is randomized on every note like everything else, and it's between 300 milliseconds and one second. And if your leader is on point, in other words, if your, say, horn one has this value set to a maximum, then this gives the effect of all the other players tuning to your leader as they play together as an ensemble. Well, by itself, that's really wonky. Now with the ensemble. The zone settings menu allows you to enable neighboring route robin and to initiate the transpose trick with a single click. These options will transpose the instrument by the specified value and transpose the input by the opposite amount. This way the pitch of the instrument stays the same, but you get access to samples from a different note. Letting you double up or quintuple up your instrument count and avoid phasing, just make sure you change the instrument position. So you can fill up all of these positions with horns and then do the same for trombones, trumpets and tubas and have this massive, absolutely massive wall of brass. Since infinite brass was chromatically sampled, using the samples from a semitone below or above makes for almost imperceptible differences, especially since we're all used to dealing with transposed samples half of the time. Transposing by two will be just a little bit more obvious, but you can fix the form and shifts with an EQ if they bother you so much. This is another great feature for laptops or low-spec machines, as loading up the same patch more than once to make use of its transpose option will not use additional RAM as long as it's happening in the same contact instance. So you can have, for example, five horns loaded in for a price of just 15 megabytes of RAM and some minor tone changes on two of the horns. Okay, this is pretty much how Infinite Brass works. It looks more complicated than it is. In reality, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is mostly set up for you. Just load up the instruments and play. Your velocity determines the attacks and your CC1 determines sustained loudness. Add vibrato, flutter, and growl when necessary. I'll now play through each instrument individually, but in the interest of time, I'll just use the Mozart tune. If you want to check out the other rooms in more detail, head over to the Infinite Brass page on the website and next to each demo you'll find a link which will take you to a dedicated page where you can listen to the demo rendered in each space. I'll click on each new instrument so you can see the range on the keyboard. 
You can also find all the ranges listed in concert pitch on the website.
of the country, but it still was sounds in the new rooms. Anyway, that was it in Rust 1.4, and as you can see, it can pretty much do anything you throw at it and do it with ease. As for the future, the only thing that's currently planned is the addition of the fourth room. The big concert hall was not included in 1.4 due to some complications and will be added in a future update. All the new rooms and improvements will be coming to Infinite Woodwinds in the next patch. If you already own any of the two, you are eligible for a crossgrade. There's also the Infinite Wind Ensemble bundle, which lets you get Infinite Brass and Infinite Woodwinds together with a discount. Check the website for both crossgrading and the bundle. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below or send me a message via the website and I'll reply as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and bye.